VPQ 85 calling VPQ 62. This is VPQ 62. We are receiving you. Over. I have a relayed message for Jungle Jim. Over. I regret Jungle Jim is away at the moment on an expedition into the Uganda. However, I am Kasim, a family friend, and she'll be pleased to take the message for him. Over. Riding her, stand by, Kasim. Message follows. Jungle Jim, Kenya Colony, British East Africa. Please procure and ship two lion cubs at earliest opportunity to be. Care of General Delivery, New York City, USA. Price, no object. Offer double usual fee. Signed, Colby. End of message, over. Thank you, VPQ85, for relaying this message. I shall advise Jungle Jim immediately upon his return. Over and clear. Something for me, Kasim? Sob Jim, welcome home. Thanks, Kasim. It's good to be back. Anything important? An order for two lion cubs at double the usual fee. Is that so? For who? Some man named Colby in New York City. Professional animal trainer, I suspect. Not trainer, butcher. I don't understand, Sob. You would if you'd ever see how he treats animals. Beats them half to death trying to make them do impossible tricks. He'll not get any animals from me for any money. Of course not. May I send him a message to that effect? The sooner the better. At once. Where's Skipper? In his room, Sob. I left him with enough schoolwork to keep him safely occupied for a month. If it only would. They, they, they fired at me from ambush. Look. Bloodthirsty natives. The whole jungle's alive with them. Skipper. Yes, Dad. It's my arrow. Do you mean that this this boy tried to kill me? Well, no, sir. It was an accident. You see, I was trying to teach Tambo. I was trying to teach him how to shoot my bow, and well, he needs practice. That's for sure. I'm sorry about your hat, sir, if we frightened you. Uh, frightened me? I, I, I've never been so terrified in my life. You see, I, I, I'm not used to this sort of excitement. You're not dressed for it either. Well, perhaps I'm not, but uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Whitfield Smythe, professor of archaeology. Glad to know you, professor. This is my friend, Kasim. An honor, sir. And my son, Skipper. Hi. I'm Jungle Jim. Jungle Jim? Why... I travel thousands of miles to meet you. What about? Uh, Baroa. You mean the lost city in Brazil? Precisely. Uh, interested? Could be. Make yourself comfortable. We'll talk about it. Splendid. Shall I bring some refreshments, Sob Jim? Thanks, Carson. What's the lost city of Baroa, Professor? I never heard of it. No wonder. Teaching Tamba how to shoot a bow and arrow doesn't leave much time to study history. Oh, gee, Dad, I said I was sorry. <laughs> the lost city of Baroa, my man, uh, was one of those fabulous strongholds of the early Incas. It was discovered by a group of Spanish explorers in 1535. Well, how'd it get lost? Uh, it didn't. Uh, civilization lost it. Fortunately, one of those explorers uh, made a diary, which by some means or other fell into the hands of Sir Walter Raleigh, you know, the famous uh, British uh, explorer. Didn't Raleigh once try to find Baroa? Uh, yes, yes, but he failed. Nevertheless, he fashioned a very accurate map from the contents which he found in that diary. Where is the map? Well, I... Uh, go ahead, Professor. We have no secrets from Kasim. Uh, Raleigh's map is now in possession of my associate, Professor Henry Madeiro, who is now in Brazil, awaiting word as to whether you will or will not lead us out. Baro is supposed to be somewhere in the Chapuri country, isn't it? Yes, Sergeant. It's all uncharted territory. That is precisely why we want you, Jungle Jim. 
because I've had the information that you are the only man who can lead us into this kind of a jungle and out again. Well, I could try. But then you'll come. Why not, Sal Jim? I can manage things here, and you've been interested in Broa for years. Okay, it's a deal. Gee, Dad, can I go too? What about your studies? Oh, I could take my books with me and study at night when we make camp. Oh, I don't know. I think you better stay here and let Kasim help you with your lessons. Good, Dad. It's for your own good. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me, I, I don't like to intrude, but uh, I'd like to point out that this trip would be like a, a living geography lesson for this young man. And with myself and my associate, he'd have uh, two college professors as tutors. <laughs> Okay, Tamba, you can come too. Maybe the professors can teach you and Skipper how to stay out of trouble. Yippee! Oh, I have to send a cable to Professor Madeiro uh, to give him the good news. We have shortwave radio equipment here, Saab. I shall be happy to send any message you wish to Nairobi for transshipment to Professor Madeira in Brazil. Splendid! Professor Smythe. How do we get to Brazil from Africa? Oh, let me see now. I... Well, we can catch a plane from Nairobi. This plane takes us across Africa to Dakar, where we catch a second plane, which carries us across the South Atlantic Ocean to Recife, Brazil. Here, we take a third plane for a flight up of the Amazon to Fonte Bayo. From there, we proceed on foot through the jungle. And within a few days, we shall be arriving at the camp of my colleague, Professor Henry Madeiro. Welcome, my friend. It is a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks, Professor. When would you like to get started? As quickly as possible. I procured the supplies according to your cable instruction. So I see. Where are the porters? Gone. When they learned we were heading into the Japati country, they deserted. Afraid of the unknown, I guess. Uh, don't you think we'd better wait until we can hire some others? Impossible. I've tried. Besides, we've only a month before the rain set in. Is that not so, Jungle Jim? Are you suggesting that we go without porters? We haven't much choice. We'll travel light and carry only what we need. Well, if you say so... Don't worry, Professor Smythe. It's a cinch. Dad and I have done it lots of times. Come on, Skipper. Let's check the supplies. Why the boy? Jungle Jim is a very devoted father. And I'm sure there's nothing he wouldn't do to keep his son from danger. I've got to hand it to you. You think of everything. Our success depends on it. Have you got the map? It's right here, safe. <laughs> Friend Jim thinks it's the one prepared by Sir Walter Raleigh. Raleigh must be whirling in his grave. No more so than that stubborn fool of a native who drew it. Well, he shouldn't have refused to part with it. I trust our new jungle guide will prove a lot more cooperative. In this spot, Professor Smythe? Capital. Well, what's that? Wild pig. Don't move. They're only dangerous if they think someone's trying to kill them. I feel as if I could never look a ham sandwich in the face again. Let's go. Professor Smythe, haven't you ever been on an expedition before? Uh, yes, but only in the desert. You see, I hunt the lost cities, uh, not wild beasts. Well, don't worry. Dad will take care of us. Professor, you got him right between the eyes. I didn't know school teachers could shoot so good. Uh, Professor Madeira's pet hobby is shooting. You see, he was the captain of his pistol team at his university. It's good shooting, but not very smart. I don't understand. Those shots just told the natives that we're here and we're not friendly. What are you talking about? Well, back home, the natives are always afraid of the white men with guns. You see, they think the strangers will kill them with the fire sticks that make noise. And that's why Dad only carries a knife. Oh, they're ridiculous. Ridiculous or not, we have enough trouble with wild beasts without having to worry about unfriendly natives. So let's have no more shooting. I say, can't we rest a minute? My feet won't carry me a step further. Rest here, I'll cut a trail ahead. Target 
get it for me, Tambo. Dad! Dad! Look out! Are you all right? Yes, Dad. From now on, stay close. Yes, sir. That's quite a trick, killing a panther with a knife. We've got other worries besides panthers. Natives again? I haven't seen any signs of natives. I have. Look. In jungle language, that means keep out. Aren't you hungry, Professor? No. Here. Get all of yourself, Professor. We've still got a long way to go. How long? Let's check that map again. Well, we hit the river sometime tomorrow. Figure two more days to the mountain, another to climb. Once we hit the top, we're practically there. The sooner the better for me. Well, time to retire. We better sleep up in the trees tonight. In the trees? That's right. But I, I, I might fall off and break my neck. Well, it's your neck or your head. Take your choice. Oh. Skipper, douse the fire. Yes, sir. Sleeping in trees like monkeys. I don't think... Uh, Perhaps we'd better forget about Baroa. Don't be a fool. Dad! The mountain on the map, I think I see it! That's it, all right. We'll get started right after breakfast. Let's get it in the water and hope our luck holds. The natives who hit it can't be too far off. This is more like it. Don't do that unless you want to lose it. Crocodile's dead. Worse. Piranhas. Hand me one of those arrows. Watch. This river is full of
how much further is it? Not much. We're almost to the top. What's the hurry? Nothing's going to run away. Perhaps not. But science has waited too long for this moment already. Sprite is right. We must begin at once. Come, Professor. Hey, Dad! Look at Tambo! The treasure! The chimps found it. Brazilian government, it's the law. Laws can be broken. It's happened before. I'm sure you know all about that, Professor, but it won't happen here. You're wrong, my honest friend. Now don't move and don't do anything foolish. Nice work, Smythe. I didn't know you had it in you. Don't be surprised what I can do when I'm working the stakes like this. <laughs> Tell this brat of yours to hold still before he gets hurt. What's on your mind, Madero? We're taking the stuff out of here. You're guiding us safely to the coast. Then what? Smythe and I disappear with the treasure. You can tell the Brazilian government anything you want. I'd listen very hard if I were you. Mr. Madero ain't used to giving idle threats. Okay, you win. That's being sensible. You and Smythe start carting the stuff out where we left our packs. I'll keep an eye on you. See that you don't miss anything. You too, lend a hand. Get out of here in a hurry. Get your bow and arrow. 
corner, Skipper. Let's go. They weren't, Professor Skipper. Just a pair of murderous crooks. Think the Indians got them? The Indians and their own greed. Come on. Hey, wait a minute, Dad. I just remembered something. What? My books. I left them back at the ruins. Don't worry. I'll get your new set when we get home. Ah, oh, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> 